Good morning and warm welcome to all the participants. It's our pleasure to have with us Dr. Dhaninder Kumar Goa. Uh, Ma'am, the recording has started. Uh, they, they, uh, Dr. Devi, open up. Yes, you may yes. start with the introduction. Yes, am I audible? Yeah, a bit louder. Hello, I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. You're audible now. Yes. Okay. Shall I start? Yes, yes, please do. Yes. Very good morning to all the dignitaries and participants. Today, I am invested with the duty to introduce the eminent scientist Dr. G. K. Gaur to this 21 days training program. Welcome you, sir. Prior to sir's lecture, I am narrating a brief profile of sir. Dr. G. K. Gaur started his career as scientist from NAM, NAM Hyderabad, senior scientist from NBA GR Karnal and subsequently principal scientist from Project Directorate on Cattle Meerut. Sir joined ICR IVRI IZ Nagar in the year 2011 and working presently as in charge livestock production and management section. Sir is a distinguished animal breeder and contributed significantly in the area of livestock genetic improvement for cattle, buffalo, goat, and pigs. Sir has an experience of 29 years of research, teaching, and extension and has undergone foreign training in the area of marker assisted selection at Iowa State University, USA. Sir has developed two prospered population of cattle, Friesworld and Brindavani, and one variety of pig, Landly. Sir has characterized, documented, and registered one breed of goat, Rohilkhandi, and one breed of pig called Ghura. He developed a technique for pig manure conditioning for efficient biogas production, fabricated a biogas digester, and developed a database management software. Sir has designed and developed mobile app IVRA Landly Pig app. Sir has invested many investigated many SNPs having association with production and health traits in cattle and pigs. He also assessed genetic diversity and admixture level in crossbred cattle population. Sir has published 150 research papers in journals of high impact factor, authored two books, edited four books and two Comedia of summer school. Sir has got one design patent for tractor-driven portable feed block making machine. Sir is a recipient of prestigious Vishnu Sudama Memorial Medal 2011-2001 from Indian Veterinary Association. Reviewer Excellence Award in the year 2016 from Agricultural Research Communication Center and Raj Bhasha YGND in the year 2017 from Indian Veterinary Research Institute. Sir has been the member and member secretary of board of studies, research advisory committee, quinquennial review team at various institutes of ICAR. Sir has also involved as a member of the team in formulation of uh, breeding policy of livestock in Punjab and Uttar Pradesh state. With this introduction, let us welcome you, sir, to this platform to deliver his lecture on accelerating genetic improvement of livestock in the current era. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, madam. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Thank you, sir. Once again, I would like to express my sincere thanks to all the organizers for giving this opportunity. And a special thanks to Dr. Rudra. Dear colleagues, good morning. The title of my presentation is Accelerating Genetic Improvement of Livestock in the Current Era. Let us see the ancient India. India is said to be the country of Kamdenu. This indicates you can ask any amount of milk at any place at any time. However, it was not being reflected with the data which was available at the time of independence. If we try to examine the independent India, during 1951, we had 46 million cattle. Whereas the milk production of the country was only 17.40 million tons and per capita availability of the milk was only 132 grams per day. And at the same time, the Indian Council of Medical Research was recommending that a person should have per day 283 grams of milk per day. It means the per capita availability of the milk was much lesser as compared to the requirement. So in fact, in one side, we were saying that 
India is the country of Kamzenu. But another side, it was not being realized or not being reflected in terms of statistical data. And not only this, the average milk yield per cow, it was only 413 pounds, or in other words, it was 192 kg. And probably it was the lowest in the world. Whereas the highest milk producing countries were Netherlands with 8,000 pounds, Australia with 7,000 pounds, Sweden with 6,000 pounds, and USA with 5,000 pounds. The situation remains almost similar presently also. This is the average milk yield at the national level during 2019 and 20. And we have the per kg production of exotic cows at the level of 11.88 kg. For crossbred cows, this is 8.09 kg per day. For indigenous cows, it is 3.90 kg. For non descript cows, it seems to be 2.57 kg. For indigenous buffalo, this is 6.43 kg. For non descript buffalo, this is 4.51 kg. So again, the production has not reached to that desired level for which we were expecting. At the same time, if we would like to give the example of foreign countries, so let us take the example of USA. The milk production per cow per year has been mentioned in this slide. During 1944, the milk production per cow per year, it was 2074 kg. And during 2019, these animals have reached at the level of 10,610 kg. So you can say the drastic increase or almost the five times increase. So from 1944 to 2019, there has been drastic increase in the milk production at the rate of five times. In fact, you can say that this is the improvement. And not only this, the top producing Holstein Frisian cows, they are producing approximately 32,000 kg milk in 365 days. Of course, the entire country has been shifted towards the population of Holstein Frisian only. And at the initial point of time, they were also having number of breeds, but now they have only restricted towards the Holstein Frisian because this is one of the highest producing milk in the world as a whole. So they started increasing the frequency of Holstein Frisian population and now the frequency of Holstein population in the US has reached to 90% from 46% in 1944. So you can say ultimately that this is in fact the rate of genetic improvement which can be five times as compared to 1940. Not only in case of US, but there are certain countries which have shown the drastic increase in case of milk production. For example, Israel, Canada, France, Denmark, Netherlands, as well as the Australia. So they have shown drastic increase in the milk production. The one of the major cause for improvement in the milk production is use of most efficient breeding tool. Or in other words, you can say that this is the only tool by which they have improved a lot with respect to the milk production. When we talk about the breeding tool, then we have to focus towards the definition of the production system. Then ultimately we have to define the breeding goal. We have to go for collection of the certain information with respect to phenotypes, the family relationships, or you can see the pedigrees, the genotypes. And ultimately, we have to determine the selection criteria based on the genetic model as well as estimation of the breeding value. And finally, we have to select the individuals for the mating purpose in order to predict the selection response as a result of the mating decisions. And finally, we have to reach to the dissemination of the good animals based on the structure of the breeding programs. And finally, we have to evaluate animals genetically and we have to further estimate the genetic diversity, whether we are in loss of additive genetic variance or the genetic variance or not. Because our ultimate aim is to improve genetically animals, but at the same time, the additive genetic variance or you can say the genetic variance of the whole population that should not be declined drastically. So we have to maintain both. So ultimately, 
we have to see the purpose of breeding program this is wonderful program and without execution of the good or optimum breeding program we cannot expect improvement in the production or improvement in the performance the basic purpose is to obtain the sustainable gains in the multiple states not only with respect to the milk production we would also like to focus towards the reproduction performance the growth performance and in case of the beef animals the carcass or the properties of the carcass the quality of the carcass but at the same time we should also go for controlling the loss of genetic variation so we could have the more breeding program execution otherwise in case there is a no genetic variance in the population then we can say that we have reached to the peak and beyond that there will not be any kind of improvement program so ultimately we have to optimize the both components one is we have to go for genetic improvement and at the same time we have to control the loss of genetic variation so now we have to focus only with respect to these two components now the components of breeding program they have also shown their modification earlier we used to talk about only the genetic response or to have the gain now the system has been modified we have to focus on the agricultural policy as well as market the socio economic as well as the cultural value the environmental production system and finally we have to see the infrastructure available with the government as well as farmers so now the breeding policies have to be based on these components along with all other existing components which initially we used to take care of so finally there is a need to modify the breeding program so that we could explore livestock genetic resources based on infrastructure availability as well as the social economic level of the farmers and their perceptions or you can say according to need in the particular area so we cannot make or we cannot frame the simple breeding policy for a particular unit or for a particular environment so we have to frame the breeding policy for a particular area according to the group of the farmers which is based on the socio economic level and subsequently based on the group of the animals so there must be large number of the breeding policy because we have the vast livestock population and the vast agroclimatic area we have variety of traditional breeding policies they have been well accepted by the country and they have been adapted well by the country but the rate of genetic improvement was not at the level of acceptance or you can say we could not have the desired level of genetic improvement despite of implementing so many breeding policies in the country these breeding policies were selection in case of the indigenous breeds the grading up of non descript cattle utilizing the superior indigenous breeds the development of non descript population into the dual purpose breeds of course it was written recommended by indian council of agriculture research subsequently there was entire era of the cross breeding with the exotic breeds and ultimate aim was to evolve the new milk populations or the breeds or the strains or the varieties according to the different species if we talk about the cross breeding in india it was started in 1875 with the development of a new cross bred population dealer this was around patna utilizing short horn bulls on the native cows but presently the current status reflects we do not have this kind of animal or these animals have almost extinct subsequently the cross breeding was initiated in nilgiri area of madras state as well as the hilly regions of assam and bangla they used ayasha holstein as well as the jersey bulls along with the native cows and this program or the policy was basically implemented by european missionaries as well as the tea planters subsequently in 1891 milky farms take up the cross breeding experiments utilizing different european breeds like frisian jersey goranse ayasha as well as the short horn and they also used different jibu breeds like sahiba haryana tharpaka sindhi as well as gir In 1910, Imperial Dairy Research Institute, Bangalore, which is presently known as Southern Regional Station, NDRI, 
they also carried out cross breeding investigation first with isr as well as haryana and subsequently with isr and red sandy breed again the same process was continued at livestock research station basar during 1990 utilizing isr with red sandy subsequently in 1920 indian agriculture research institute because it was initiated in bihar they also take up cross breeding experimentation or investigation to utilizing different exotic breeds with the sahiwal cow in 1924 anabad agriculture institute also take up the similar experiment and their purpose was to evolve a new cross bred milk population that could produce the hair milk indian council of agriculture research in 1955 they also investigated very interesting phenomena or the investigation with respect to hilly as well as the heavy rainfall area they used jersey in order to determine the optimum proportion of the exotic inheritance in the cross beds and finally to sustain the productivity after interbreeding under village conditions so they were having the two objectives for this project subsequently during 1968 a mega cross breeding project was launched by indian council of agriculture research the title was behavior pattern of jibu cross beds and basically it was sanctioned during fourth plan it was established or it was executed at ibri as well as hau the objectives were three to examine the suitability of exotic and the indigenous breeds to examine the level of exotic inheritance and to see the impact of interbreeding and genotype and environment interaction under this project haryana was crossed with holstein friesian bronxes as well as jersey and subsequently on 1st april 1969 this project was renamed as all india coordinated research project on cattle and the coordinating unit of this project was at ibri isatnagar and during 1970 three more units that is apau lam mpau raguri and jmk bv jabalpur they were also incorporated in the project angol was taken as the foundation breed at lam and gir was taken as the remaining center during 1972 another investigation which was generally known as the international cross breeding project at haringata with haryana breed it was also incorporated in the project in the same line or direction the national dairy research institute they also started the cross breeding program utilizing different exotic breeds and sahiwal red sindhi tharparkar as the native breed their purpose was also to evolve the i yielding cross bred strains or the populations in the country these different results of cross breeding they really felt that the bhat would be the gain or the genetic improvement with respect to the production performance reproduction performance or the growth that it was found that on the basis of different investigations that holstein crosses had the highest production followed by browns as well as the jersey crosses furthermore there is a need to stabilize exotic inheritance nearly 50% level through interbreeding and thereafter we can go for genetic improvement through selective breeding only it was also realized that there is a little decline in the milk production through interbreeding so ultimately all the cross bred populations have to be interbred and they have to be restricted from 50 to 65% or 62.5% level of exotic inheritance and now clearly there was heterotic effect with respect to the milk production there are number of investigations which have revealed this there was improvement in milk production by 53% in the red sindhi cow two times more milk in case of the jersey as well as the red sindhi half bred 188% improvement in the milk production when we crossed the friesian as well as haryana again heterotic effect of 34% when holstein as well as the sahiwal were bred and subsequently 4.97% head crosses in case of sahiwal and friesian crosses 50% increase in the milk production through crossing of browns as well as sahiwal and 146% or you can say 1.5 times increase in the milk production at terla was also noticed when jersey was crossed with local not only with respect to the milk production or the production performance but reproduction performance also showed the quite improvement or encouraging results with respect to the reproduction 
it was shown with respect to age at first coming or you can say the declining trend in case of the age at first coming age at first coming reached to the level of 14 months only the service period dry period coming interval all these reproduction parameters showed the declining trend when we observed the impact of cross breeding on these states at the same time there was improvement in the growth birth weight improved by 7% and the again birth weight was improved by 8% in holostin season as well as the cycle cross so finally we can say that after execution of the cross breeding experiments there was improvement with respect to milk production and there was decline in case of the reproduction performance and again there was improvement or you can say increase in the growth of the animal so finally there was no investigation at all which could show the deteriorated effect of cross breeding on the production reproduction or the growth performance finally undoubtedly we can say that there is a more milk production when we go for the cross breeding and utilizing these consequences we could develop so many cross bred populations and these populations were taylor jersing brown twin jatha Current freeze, current Swiss, so not any, then that any as well as freeze work. Let us take one by one. Jersey was developed at Ahmedabad Agricultural University during 1929 to 1934. They used Holstein Friesian brown Swiss Jersey as well as Gorenze as the exotic breeds, and Sahiwa, Gir, Haryana, Kakre, and Red Sindhi as the indigenous breeds. The most favored genotype, or you can say the inheritance pattern. in case of the jersing was almost 3 by 8 to 5 by 8 or you can say around 50% or 50 to 60% but there is no animal left with respect to the jersing at alawa the agriculture university for gently so now you can say that the entire population of the cross bred has no value now and it has deleted from the india itself jatha It was developed during 1958 at Ndari Banglo. For the genesis of this population, the Jersey bulls were bred with the Thurparker cows, and this entire theory of the evaluation was based on the interest mating, and they tried to maintain 50% exotic inheritance. The performance of the Jersey was excellent; it was good. But again, there is no animal from this prospect population at Ndari Banglo now. So, Ndari. it was developed under indosis project during 1963 and subsequently during 1978 it was taken up by kldb they had 62.5% exotic inheritance and the name sunandini it was first given during 1979 by kldb and basically this is the cross of sahibal gir rakhi non descript with the prouses luckily they have large number of the sunandini the reason is whatever cross bred population has been developed in kerala they used to say sunandini so there is a no dearth of sunandini animals in kerala and there are large number of animals sunandini in millions or in lakhs you can say available in the state current freeze it was developed at ndri during 1971 her partner was crossed with holostin friesian brown freeze as well as jersey and subsequently they decided only incorporation of holostin friesian They maintained exotic inheritance at the level of 62.5 percent, and the best performing animals production is around 60 liter day per day. So good performance of current freeze is there at the Ndari Karna. Current freeze is another cross bred population that has been developed at Ndari Karna. It was developed during 1962, and this is the cross of brown freeze along with Sahiwal as well as the red Sindhi. the best performer individuals have 44 liters per day freeze one it was developed by indian council of agriculture research at project directorate on cattle the project was executed in collaboration with military farms during 1987 and they had breeding policy like this they initially had molestin freezen as well as the cross of the saiwal and now They were having approximately twenty thousand annuals. 
After closure of military farms during 2019, the government of India has decided to distribute all the fish farm animals in the field. So subsequently, all the animals were procured by Uttarakhand government. And now they have distributed all freeze wild animals in the field to the farmer. So now this has become the fate of freeze wild. Prindavri, it has been produced by ICR IBRI. We have number of crossbred germ class up to 2006. And they were the result of volunteer coordination project on cattle. During 2006, we decided that all these genetic groups should be merged together because their performance was almost similar. So after merging all crossbred populations, a new name was given as Vrindavani to this crossbred population. Presently, according to the genetic constitution of this population, this is the cross of Wallerstein Frisian, Brown Tooth and Jersey, and Haryana as the native breed. And we have 50 to 75% exotic inheritance. And remaining inheritance has come from Haryana or the indigenous cattle. Haryana as the indigenous cattle alone. The performance is excellent. The average production is 3,500 in a particular lactation. And we have distributed large number of animals to the field level and number of doses of the semen at the field level. If we talk about the overall performance of these all crossbacks as compared to our indigenous breed, that is Sahiba. Then every parameter seems to be inferior. There is an improvement with respect to the total lactation milk yield. Maybe sometimes this is 100% and sometimes this is 1.5 times more. In a similar fashion, the lactation length, it has also shown the improvement. And there is a decline with respect to the age at first coming as well as the coming envelope. So subsequently you can say that the overall investigations of the crossbreeding in the entire in country, it has reflected that undoubtedly the production performance through crossbreeding has improved, especially in case of cattle. If we talk about the overall outcome of the breeding strategies in the country, undoubtedly there is an improvement in the production through the crossbreeding. However, the effect of the selection has been very, very limited. The regions are number of, the hover herd size is very small, intensity of the selection as well as the accuracy, they are very small or you can say the less. Recording system does not exist in the entire country. If this is available, this is only available at certain number of the farm. The breeding strategies, they have been implemented to only some extent. It means the most of the country or entire country has remained. I mean without the breeding policy. Even then, if we see the major characteristics of our country, as far as the livestock is concerned, we have bruised population and the production potential of these animals is very low. This population is skewed with respect to only few breeds. Or rather you can say, largely we have non-descript as well as the non-characterized population. It means the population is completely skewed. At the one tail, we have only few breeds. And the, at major stage or the, at major tail, you can say, we have only non characterized or non descript animals. If we talk about the farmers, they have very, very small holdings with respect to the animals as well as land. And there is a shortage of elite males in the field, the one of the most important concerns. According to one of the investigation or the calculation, it has been observed that in order to cover 30% breedable bovine population through AI, at least 1050 or 1050 proven bulls of crossbred cattle are required. With respect to the indigenous cattle breeds, the requirement is 5700 bulls. And in case of buffaloes, we need 11,400 bulls in order to cover only 30% breedable bovine population. Then what about the 100%? So it has, the figure has to be multiplied by 7. Or you can say the number, number of times we have to multiply these ways. Then one of the important issues as per the breeding policy is concerned in the entire country is why these we could not have the desired genetic improvement or 
why limited genetic improvement has been obtained in the entire country the reasons may be two and these reasons seems to be number one whether breeding strategies are inappropriate or whatever breeding policies we have executed number one they may be inappropriate or their execution is improper very important question and very unbiased question there are number of investigations or you can say the critical comments on this and these critical comments ultimately reflect that there is a no dearth of breeding policy or you can say the breeding strategies are of course appropriate but their execution is not proper therefore presently the need of the hour is the proper execution of the breeding policy so that we could have the desired level of genetic improvement if we see the present india we have 536 million livestock heads and this entire population belongs to 200 registered breeds of called livestock poultry as well as the dogs and during 2019 we had 192 million cattle and 110 million buffalo this entire bovine genetic resources of india consists of 50 breeds of cattle as well as the 17 breeds of buffalo the break up of cattle population shows that we have 21% cross bred population followed by 59% non descript or you can say the 11% is great indigenous and 9% is only the pure bred indigenous similarly at the top level we have the 64% non descript buffalo followed by 25% great indigenous and pure bred buffaloes are only 11% so this is the present scenario of india if we talk about the share of indigenous cattle and the buffalo breeds again with respect to the different breed or the breed wise then the highest population in cattle is of haryana followed by gir sahiwal kakres similarly in case of buffalo the population of murda is highest followed by Durti, Mehsana, Jafrabadi, and Badawi. And proportion of the non-descript, this is too much. In case of cattle as well as buffalo, too. This is very good point, or the point which generally reflect that we are doing something. So we are the top leader in the world as per the milk production is concerned. and during 18 and 19 we have reached to the level of 187.7 million tons with per capita availability of 394 grams but still there are so many opportunities which indicate that we have to go for increased milk production again species wise if we examine approximately the milk production of buffalo it is almost the 49% of the country total milk production at the same time the cattle are producing the 48% and the goat production is only the 3% of total milk production in the country annual growth rate this is also very good the present growth rate is approximately 6.5% annually so the data is not bad but productivity per animal that has to be enhanced and genetics is one of the important component utilizing which we can have the drastic improvement as per the milk production is concerned now how to improve the performance as a whole we have to consider the indian bovine genetic resources a group of indigenous bovine genetic resources as well as the cross bred bovine genetic resources now country has become in two parts there are number of persons who say the cross bred bovine genetic resources this is not the part of country so why we should care them no maybe my personal view indian bovine genetic resources consists of 
इंडिजिनस बोवाइन जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज प्लस क्रॉसबैक बोवाइन जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज तो वी हैव टू केयर बोथ We have to care indigenous bovine genetic resources along with the crossbred bovine genetic resources. So ultimately, the need of the hour is we have to go for development of indigenous bovine genetic resources along with the crossbreds have to be maintained nicely, perfectly. The reason is their population is 21 percent of the cattle population. So this population is not very less. This is significant population. So you have to make up the plans according to the excellent breeding policy for their survival as well as genetic improvement also. So again, the final. I need your kind attention. The need of the hour is to maintain the balance between two. Or in other words, we have to genetically improve the indigenous bovine genetic resources as well as the crossbred. So now we cannot forget the prospects. The more focus when we consider the breeding policies or execution of the breeding policies is to contain the number of unproductive or the low productive non-descript animals. And the reason seems to be very logical. The major constraint of the livestock production is the feed efficiency. At present, we are deficient by 11% with respect to the dry fodder. 45% with respect to green fodder and 35% with respect to conservative. And furthermore, the feed cost is increasing day by day. So under this scenario, there is a no doubt we have to curtail the number of these animals or the unproductive category. Then, because resources are very limited, so we cannot go the similar breeding policy for every group of the livestock. So accordingly, we have to divide breeding policy according to the different groups. Let us take the example of bovines. For indigenous genetic resources, the need is prioritize the breeds. We can never think about all the breeds. Again, because the resources are very limited. So we have to go for prioritization of the breeds. And take all possible efforts to cover most of the animals of that particular breed. Of course, the recording must be there, and there must be the mega project for the testing with respect to the 40 or the 50 bulls, so that we can have the top ranked semen from the elite bulls, and we can expect the 1% of the genetic gain. With respect to non-descript genetic resources, maybe we can determine the grading up with the Sahibal Kharparkar of the Red Sindhi here as well as the Kankrej. The use of the Holstein regime can also be recommended in the areas with the high inputs. And we can also go for use of the jersey in case of the hills. And grading up can also be recommended in buffaloes, utilizing Murra, Jafrabadi, Mesana, as well as Turkey. For the crossbred cattle genetic resources, again now the breeding policy has been modified as one third because their population is vast. So our requirement seems to be. A mega research project needs to be implemented for testing of at least 100 bulls. So criteria must be to incorporate each and every crossbred animal available in entire India or in the particular region. So that we could identify the top bulls that could be ultimately used for increasing the rate of genetic improvement in the herd. For the milk breeds with reasonably good population like this Sahibal, Kankrej as well as Murra, Popularization should be the utmost importance. We should go for establishment of 5 to 10 farms of each breed, maintain 400 delight animals, implement progeny testing scheme through the network project, collect semen at the rate of 5,000 doses per bull. At least we should go for 1 to 1.5 percent rate of genetic improvement so that we can say the significant amount of phenotypic improvement in the herd as a whole. For mixed breeds with less population like Rati, Tharparka, Rex Sindhi or Sulti, we can go for implementation of ONBS ETT or you can say in other words, the embryo transfer technology can be incorporated in ONBS system. So try to establish a nucleus herd with 100 elite cows as well as the 10 meritorious bulls. Try to increase the population through ETT, distribute the good animals 
or the bulls enter the field condition, collect semen at the rate of 5,000 doses per bull, and he can expect 2% rate of genetic gain through this technique. So this seems to be very, very wonderful, excellent technique under the NDA conditions. For those purpose breeds with the existing farms, like Haryana as well as Angol, we should give the proper attention towards strengthening of the organized herds. So minimum there must be the 200 derived females along with the 20 males. And at least these farms should be maintained with the objective to have 0.5% rate of genetic improvement annually, if not more than that. Similarly, for other breeds with the existing farms or the without farms, our objective must be there to conserve as well as genetic improve all these breeds. So at least one organized herd has to be strengthened or established, utilizing 100 elite females or the 15 bulls. So that at least we could have the effective population size greater than 50 or delta F per generation 1% or less than this. So minimum rate of genetic improvement we can expect at the rate of 0.25% annually. So this kind of, I mean, the genetic makeup of the population has to be divided into different components based on the different traits or whether they belong to the different non-descript category like this. And we have to frame the different breeding policy according to the requirement of the different animals. Come to the crossbred population, the 21% of the country. Once we deal with the cattle population. So there is a need to start the mega project on progeny testing scheme using associated herd approach. Use the 100 bulls under the test mating. Strengthen phenotypic as well as the data recording system. Cover almost 20,000 cows. And then subsequently use only the top 10 bulls under the nominated mating and try to have the excellent rate of genetic improvement minimum 1.5% annually. We cannot leave the local bovine population. Of course, the local bovine is the lower priority to the farmers. The regions are too. The poor production potentiality as well as the higher cost of the production. The landless is small as well as the marginal farmers, they also prefer to rear the good milk animals. The small holders, they have small excess resources for the efficient animal utilization. They cannot afford the high level inputs to maintain the high living animals. And this may be on the overall basis the counterproductive to the development. Therefore, there is an urgent need to reorient the breeding program for the improvement of non descript bovines. So finally, we can recommend for them the grading of using meritorious bulls. Especially, we can use the Sahibal, Gale, Tharparkar or the country's cattle. And in case of the buffalo, the Murra can be utilized. But it has to be ensured that the bulls should be produced from the elite dams producing 2,500 or 3,000 kg milk per lactation. So if we execute this kind of breeding technique, then at least we can expect increase in the milk yield of the daughters from 500 to 1000 kg in the first lactation itself and subsequently both. According to minimum standard protocol, this is the requirement of the dense yield. On the basis of we can go for selection of the sons or you can say the bulls. Genomic selection, the very famous technique nowadays. This is also said to be of the DNA based selection. In general, what our requirement is, the most of the traditional techniques are based on the phenotype. But now, our ultimate aim is to have the direct genotype, or you can say there are number of techniques which are available, which can deal with the direct genotyping. This is known as the genomic selection. In other words, we try to dig up the market data, which is combined with the phenotypic as well as the pedigree data to increase the accuracy. And the two important components nowadays we are facing. There is a reduction in the genotyping because when this technique started, the per sample cost was approximately 15,000. And now within 10,000, you can have the one sample for the genotyping purpose. Again, one of the duty of this technique is the reduction in the generation interval. So utilizing both things, we can expect increase in the selection gains per unit of time. Or ultimately, we can expect double rate of genetic improvement through this technique. 
and generally we believe that the genomic selection will replace the traditional building system in the forthcoming generations. We have the SNP data sets. Typically, the large number of the data is being generated under this technique. And this data has to be recorded. Again, one of the important property of this kind of technique is that the most of the genetic variance has been explained by the chip. Or you can say, utilizing this technique, we can play with the most of the genetic variation which is available in the animal itself. And more genetic variation, we can expect the more amount of the genetic response or the more amount of the genetic gain. So this is very beneficial technique, utilizing which we can go for high rate of genetic improvement. In general, we have three strategies to select the SNPs. One is random. Any SNP you can go for or at the equal space or those markers you can have which are having the greatest effect on the taste. So based on the criteria or the methodology on the basis of which you are executing genomic selection, you can go for. Basic objective of this technique is to know the effect of all alleles or the markers on performance taste or the breeding goal. So that we could develop the multiple regression of the phenotype on the genotype for the SNP markers. So, ultimate objective is to develop the prediction equation with respect to the breeding value of the individuals. Or finally, we can go for the selection of best animals based on their genotypic value or the genotype itself. Again, this is very, very costly affair. I have already told you. The first sample cost is approximately 10,000 rupees. So we cannot have this kind of technique for each and every breed. So first of all, we have to restrict with respect to certain number of the breeds. So how we can restrict? We can take up at the initial level only the three breeds, the Gil or the Sahiba in case of cattle and the Murra in case of the Buffalo. And we have to cover 5,000 animals with respect to the breed. The program of course has to be oriented or it has to be implemented at the country level so that there would be the collaboration of different ICR institutes. Of course, this map has shown or this slide is showing the role of the different institutions. So how the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, Department of Animal Husbandry as well as the dairy. So there is a need to implement the program incorporating each and every zone or the farmer of the country so that you can go for the excellent results and really we can expect two to three times more genetic gain as compared to the traditional technique if we go for the genomic selection in the pure sense. Another way of genotyping selection or you can say the increase in the rate of genetic gain is the national genetic evaluation. The national genetic evaluation is entirely different theory, the recent theory for which we can go again and again for advancing the rate of genetic improvement or accelerating the rate of genetic improvement. What is national genetic evaluation? This in fact provides the uniform genetic comparison across the country. It maximizes accuracy of prediction of genetic value of the animal ranking. Essential selection and the mating tool for unibreed as well as the multi-breed population. And this is also a marketing tool that increases the economic value of the evaluated animal. And in different countries, it has been used or implemented utilizing variety of characteristics, whether they may be the production characteristic or the conformation characteristic or the other health, longevity, the calving age, the female fertility. So every characteristic has been tried to incorporate and now the question is the collaboration between different countries and if not possible at different countries at national level. So ultimate aim of this kind of evaluation is genetic evaluation of the population at entire nation level. So at the national level we have to go for in order to advance the rate of genetic improvement. Again how to reach for this? This is very, very costly affair as the case was for genomic selection. So we can never go for each and every breed. So we have to restrict for the breed. Initially, we can go for there as well as cartridge in case of cattle. Of course, there is a no substitute for Murra in case of the buffaloes. And all the agencies of India, 
they need to participate in the whole program with their own help their collaboration is must if they collaborate along with their own farmers unit then definitely we can handle the large amount of data we can go for the genomics we can go for the genomics we can go for the progeny testing scheme we can go for the online breed registry we can go for the e marketing then there will be the separate calf rearing units multiplication units so final expectation is that under this scheme every animal has to be recorded every farmer will be the part of recording system and ultimately we can expect that good quality of the data good phenotype good genotype and finally we can expect 3 to 4% of improvement as per the phenotype is concerned thank you very much i think i have taken more time but even then because it was necessary and now the time is only for the genomics as well as the national genomic evaluation system so most of the traditional systems have to be incorporated along with national evaluation system along with the genomics thank you very much now you can stop the sharing if there are any question please come up thank you so much sir uh, for such an informative lecture on uh, breeding policies and genetic improvement of livestock through cross breeding in our country i hope all the participants have been enlightened and enriched with the knowledge regarding uh, cross bred population in our country and the need to preserve the balance between indigenous and exotic genetic material by customized breeding programs sir has also introduced some new concepts like snps and marker assisted selection and way forward as far as genetic selection is concerned using participatory approach i hope uh, um, Uh, many have listened to it very carefully, and the number of questions um, we will uh, right now address, sir. May I read out, sir? Uh, you can see the questions in the chat box as well. Okay. Yes. First question. Uh, nowadays, farmers uh, themselves crossing the native breeds like Kangaayam with Tharparkar or Kangaayam with Sahiwal, getting considerable results. it is time to rethink about this since as you mentioned any breeding program should be farmer friendly what is your view sir in fact we should not destroy any of the indigenous breed i have very clearly stated that the breeding policy has to be formulated in such a way so that our unique germplasm must be sustained any of the way because we cannot expect anything about the future they are our future so we cannot destroy our indigenous breeds so there is a no question regarding the indigenous breeds touching only we can go for genetic improvement of the non descript animals if they are not belonging to any of the descript population there we can go for either through breeding up or for the cross breeding there is no issue but if animal is belonging to kangaayam breed and if this gentleman knows it and i think this particular activity has to be checked just kangaayam is one of the good breed and this is our duty to preserve the breed as well as for the genetic improvement its own the program should be carried out there are number of kangaayam bulls we can use their own semen or the best kangaayam bulls you should be used for the kangaayam this is my view thank you sir then second question production parameters is not the only criteria health is disease resistance and susceptibility plays major role uh, your opinion please sir. not only disease resistance now this is the time i have already clarified the need of the hour is incorporation of all traits whether this is growth this is production this is reproduction this is disease resistance and not only this the product quality so we have to take care of the product quality also under the genetic improvement program otherwise there are number of examples where the product quality bit was not taken care of and then the breeding policy hampered the entire country i can give one example the simple example of the fat field once there was only the genetic improvement with respect to the increase in the milk production and there is a milk production then definitely we can expect reduction in the fat yield 
and France affected a lot. So there was only milk, no fat. So ultimately, the bidding policy was modified, and now they are considering each and every component. So along with the milk, the fat is also important. So there must be optimality between both. So not only with respect to both, with respect to all the parameters, and not only this. Now this is the time to incorporate the behavior of animal, the welfare of the animal. So now we are concerned not only with the production performance, we are concerned with all parameters including welfare as well as the behavior of animal. Okay. Then third question, sir, import I am. Import of large number of embryos by farmers, not only in bovine, but uh, goat and avian. Is any, is there any control program for the import of uh, uh, embryos and uh, semen by farmers? Actually, this is only the news to me also. Otherwise, how farmer can import? The import business belong to government of India. If government of India is permitting, then only there is an import or export. Otherwise, no. It means government has given the permission for the import or the export of the farmers. But there are number of ways, or you can claim your views with respect to import. If import is as per the policy, then there is no doubt this is beneficial. The import is only for the purpose of the cross bidding. And I have already clarified, I am totally in favor of the cross bidding, but not indiscriminate cross bidding. Again and again, I am showing to, to each and every one. I am in favor of cross bidding, but not indiscriminate cross bidding. That has to be at the judicious level. Where cross bidding has to be applied, it should be clearly known. And this should be according to the national policy. This should not be as per the wish of the farmer. Sir, one more question, sir. Uh, the existing breeds requirement in terms of uh, green fodder and roughage is not satisfied. Any sa strategy to counter this issue with breeding policy? I have already clarified or pointed the particular point. The drastic, drastic reduction in the population. Some people say that increase in the population or you can say when we are having the more number of the livestock, this is good. But as a geneticist, I feel this is first. So we have to go for reduction of the animal so that whatever feed and fodder is available, that could be utilized in the optimal way or in the perfect way. So policy should be the strict screening of the animal or selection of the animal, or you can say the breeding policy has to be restricted in a such a way so that the large number of animals should go out. Only the best germplasm should be available in the country, so that we can have the excellent amount of genetic improvement and the good proportion, or you can say the good or optimum combination of the genes in the population. So then, the next question is related to policy. I think, sir, so what made our policy makers to expect more milk from our cattle breeds, which are uh, largely evolved for drought? It is like expecting engineering skills from doctor and milk was not the staple food except lacto-vegetarian dominant states like Rajasthan, Haryana, Gujarat, Punjab and Madhya Pradesh. Milk demand was not natural in India except these five states. It can be understood through the frequency of lactase persistence or lactose intolerance. It's policy related, I think. So. The question is too lengthy. Yes, sir. And, and in fact, and in fact, it is not revealing anything. But anyhow, I can reply to certain extent. Yes, sir, I want to Yes. I am Dr. K. Jagadishan from Tamil Nadu. Okay. And then my question is that uh, we are India has a largely of uh, drought breeds. Okay. But our policy is trying to improve the milk production. What is the okay. idea behind keeping that milk production as the breeding objective? Because mm -hmm. the milk demand was not. Food in those states, especially the lacto vegetarian dominant states, which I mentioned mm -hmm. here, only there only yes. they can a breeding objective can be the milk production improvement. What about other states? Because they are possessed with the, naturally the drought breeds. So there the breeding objective should increase the drought ability and thereby increase keeping, keeping that, you know, 
are utilizing that drought breeds in the agricultural system or otherwise they can go for it maybe meat production like beef production something like that where especially those states are non veg known for non vegetarian so in that case we, so that we cannot change the genetic makeup also and also more profitable also possible so in this way we can keep the drought breeds alive and the no need of a preservation problem also because it will automatically get preserved here the problem is the meat consumption only but the, it is a state subject right it is so that means they how they one policy can be that uniform or we say that one nation one policy applicable here no as per the policy policy of the slaughter is concerned i don't want to comment anything and probably this is not in our purview also but as per your other question is concerned the most of the breeding policies are the state subject and most of the states are taking their regulations according to their own need as per the draft breeds are concerned their dilution is the result of mechanization now at every place there is a mechanization but even then now there is a thrust of government of india through national bureau of animal genetic resources that any how we have to save the draft breeds also so we don't want to lose lose any breed whatever this is whether this is draft breed or this is milk breeds or this is the dual kind of breed so now the focus has been paid to each and every breed whether this is for the milk production or for the draft breed or for any any purpose of the breed because this is our national priority we cannot lose any of the breed but at the same time we have to go for improvement with respect to the milk production so both things have to be taken care of simultaneously now at every place we have variety of groups of animals for the milk producing this is the group for the draft purpose this is the group and this is the group of animals which is only for the draft purpose because there are number of farmers at their place the animal is doing nothing but these animals have been kept by the farmers because they love it that's all so we have to take care of each and every category of the pupil so accordingly the breeding policies now they are being made or they these all different aspects are being taken care of so next question sir uh, some of the indian breeds are performing very well in foreign countries when compared to production in at india please tell us the view your views for the lower production in india you are absolutely correct the number of number of things i have already explained at their place these breeds are doing wonderful the reason is they are utilizing the best methodology of the genetics they are giving the full quantity of the feed or you can say they are having the balanced feeding Once there is a balance feeding, and there is a hit from the genetics or the breeding purpose, so automatically you can expect the increase in case of the the milk production or the draft or in case of meat production. So this is possible, and this can be possible at our country also. Only important issue is the execution part, because we have number of things to do other than execution of breeding policy. So what is the part of animal breeders, or the state government, or the country? There are large number of things to do, except the execution of animal breeding policies in the exact fashion. And one of the important issue at present is the slaughter of animals. So what can be done? Everyone is helpless. Now nothing can be done. Now nothing can be done. So from where the execution of the breeding policy will be there? I have taught number of things. no breeding policy can be executed without separation of the animal this is the primary requirement the animal has to be separated from the breeding tract or from the from the breeding so which animal that has been separated from the tract where it is expected to go the big question if i am having the animal i have selected this animal i have discarded this animal now it has become the liability of other the so main issues are number of important issue is we are unable to execute the breeding policies in actual sense so this is the only part otherwise 
we could have also reached at the same stage where Brazil has reached, the USA has reached. I have already given the examples. The production level of the Holstein Frisian during 1950, it was only 2000. During 1950, our cyber production was only 2000. So at, during 1950, India as well as US, both were at the same stage. But now they have reached to more than 10,000 level. And we are still at the level of 2000. So this is the progress. Or you can say we are not at the progress at all. And at the same time, they have increased their milk five times more. One more question. When characterization and categorization of cattle breeds are still underway, how come breeding policy was made to go for cross breeding of non descriptive populations? Absolutely correct. This is the job of the National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resources. And they are working hard, there is no doubt. They are in association of different universities, NGOs, so that at least the particular groups which have been characterized or they have been earmarked as the breed, they should not be disturbed. Again and again, they are also trying for that. And we hope that within a year or two, every animal of India will be characterized. And probably thereafter, this question will not be raised again and again. So we are expecting that within two years or three years maximum, our most of the genetic resources will be characterized and thanks to National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resources and the help rendered by all different agricultural universities as well as NGO for their cooperation. Uh, then one more question, sir. What is your viable suggestion to make drought cattle breeds economical in this mechanized agricultural system? The technique is similar for all. Whether this is draft breed or this is milk breed. For every breed, the system seems to be the similar one. And now you can say, once we could not evolve the genetic improvement programs through the simpler techniques, then what to say about the modified techniques. But even then, if you want the comparison, then there is a no doubt, this is the time for national genetic evaluation system or implementation of genomics. So now you can expect it. And not only this, the government of India is also focusing so time to time. So now we can expect the entire reason has to be covered simultaneously. And no animal should be left out. It means every animal should become the part of breeding system. At the initial point of time or at initial level, we were only restricted towards the few number of individuals. But now this is not the time. Or now this is understood that we are not going to do with that. Now requirement is every individual has to become the part of evaluation system. The priority for the government the recording has to be practiced and then we have to go for the nationality or you can say the breeding policy at the national level or the regional level so that all possible animals should be incorporated simultaneously. Maximum accuracy could be obtained for the bull selection program or the dam selection program and genetics might play the good role. Sir, uh, I think last uh, last but one question. At field level, crossbreeding data is not kept so continuous. Uh, not kept. So continuous breeding with jersey might have increased its inheritance. Your comments, please. Number of investigations have already illustrated that the proportion of the foreign blood along with the Indian breeds should not exceed 10. 50 to 60 percent. This is the optimum level. So policy should be once you have the F1 process or maximum F2 process, thereafter the breeding between process and process has to be maintained in order to have the inter se process. If you forget this and you try to increase the proportion of imported blood then definitely there will be the deteriorated effect of the breeding policy. Because 
the enhancement with respect to the proportion of exotic blood it has not been evident from the investigation or rather you can say this is not good for the population as a whole so we have to restrict in a good sense at the f1 level itself and thereafter only the f1 bulls have to be utilized or the f1 semen have to be utilized so that we could have the intermediate population and we can stabilize the population at the same level Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And last question, sir. Uh, current breeding policy in India indicated to preserve indigenous breed of livestock of the country. How to control indiscriminate breeding in the field level to maintain the policy? If this question has been asked by Dio, then I think he knows better than me. Only the castration is the solution now. So pick up all other breed animals or ungraded animals. Especially the males, and castrate them. So this seems to be the only the logical solution. Otherwise, you cannot remove the unwanted animals from the field. This is very very headache or complicated issue. So only you can go for the castration in the interest of the breeding bull. Thank you so much, sir. I think all the queries have been addressed at the most perfect way. and thank you so much sir once again for accepting our invitation and uh, giving us uh, such an uh, informative and uh, very new um, uh, talk to us thank you so much sir thank you madam thank you dr radhika for giving this opportunity thank you thank you so much thank you very much thank you okay we can leave now